Hello, this is Terry Bradshaw, Research Specialist at the University of Vermont. I am presenting the third part of a presentation from the 2011 New England Vegetable and Fruit Meetings in Manchester, New Hampshire. In this part of the presentation, I will discuss arthropod damage incidents on fruit and foliage from five apple cultivars, Ginger Gold, Honeycrisp, Liberty, McCowan, and Zestar, grown in two organically managed orchards. The two orchards include Orchard 1, an orchard planted in 2006 with newly grown nursery trees trained on a vertical axe planting system at 580 trees per acre. The second orchard, Orchard 2, has been top grafted onto an orchard that was initially planted in 1988. The trees are freestanding central leader trees on Malling 26 semi dwarf rootstock planted at 290 trees per acre. The data for this project comes from the seasons 2009 through 2000. During assessment of foliage conducted in late July or early August of each growing season, we have consistently found high European red mite populations on all cultivars in both orchards. This is particularly troubling because mites can impact tree growth, total yield, and lead to fruit drop. Phytophagous mites are a serious and increasing problem in both orchards. Despite seeding both orchards with predatory mites, Tiflodromus pyri, during the establishment years, we are still seeing continued high populations. We do know that sulfur, lime sulfur, and surround sprays have been implicated in re reducing populations of predatory mites in previous studies. And this leads to subsequent flare-ups of phytophagous mites in orchards where those materials are used for other pest management reasons. We saw no impact from the kelp extract applications on the incidence of, of European red mites in the orchards. For future research, we need to look at how to reduce the phytophagous mite suppressive sprays, sulfur, liquid lime sulfur, and possibly kaolin and possibly look at the use of crop oils later in the season to suppress mite buildups. In each season, 30 fruit per replicate in Orchard 1 and 50 fruit per replicate in Orchard 2 were rated at harvest for arthropod damage. Plum curculio damage incidence on fruit was variable by year, orchard, and cultivar. We only saw statistical separation in 2010 for Orchard 1 and in 2011 for both orchards. In 2010, Liberty and McCowan had a higher incidence of Plum Curculio damaged fruit than Honeycrisp, but there were no separate statistical separations in Orchard 2, and the rankings were not consistent between the two orchards. In 2011, Zestar had the highest rank separation in both orchards. Honeycrisp also had a high rank separation, but in orchard one only. McCowan had the lowest incidence of plum curculio damage in both orchards that year. Tarnished plant bug damage on fruit was also variable within years and across uh, uh, cultivars and the two orchards. There were statistical separations only in one year, and the damage has always been present at a relatively similar level, roughly 7 to 14 percent of fruit damaged most cultivars for most cultivars across the years and orchards. Ginger gold has had a had higher incidence than Liberty in Orchard 1 in 2010, which was the only year with, with statistical separations. It also ranked the highest in Orchard 2 in 2009 and 2010, but again, these were not statistically significant. Apple maggot fly incidence was low in all years with very few statistical separations. Honeycrisp had a higher incidence than Liberty McCowan or Zestar for Orchard 1 in 2010. Honeycrisp also had the highest rank but no separations in Orchard 2 for all years. Zestar had a higher incidence than all other cultivars in Orchard 1 in 2011. 
Apple maggot damage has generally been below a 1% incidence for all cultivars across the years in orchards, except for Honeycrisp, which had 1.4% damage in Orchard 2 in 2009, and 2.1% damage in Orchard 1 in 2010. The incidence of apple maggot damage was one parameter where there was an effect of the kelp extract treatments run in Orchard 2, in Orchard 1, excuse me, in 2009 and 2010. This effect was only seen in 2009, and both products, Stimplex and Seacrop 16, significantly reduced apple maggot damage on the fruit from the non-treated control. However, it is important to note that the, the overall incidence was very low with the non-treated control having only one half of one percent of fruit with apple maggot damage and the kelp extracts measuring no fruit with apple maggot damage. So we, we can't conclude, uh, given that the, the pressure was quite low, that these two materials would necessarily be an effective product for helping to manage apple maggot damage. So a general synopsis of these arthropods is that apple maggot fly has essentially not been present in these particular organic orchards. Apple maggot is uh, uh, active elsewhere on the farm where these orchards are located. In 2008, we conducted a removal of wild hosts surrounding the orchard. Uh, this likely had an effect on reducing the population in the immediate area directly around the orchard. Um, the other areas where the apple maggot are present on the farm are located a, a good distance away from these particular orchards. And this shows the effect that, that uh, surrounding crop habitat can have on managing insect pests uh, in a planting. We also seem to be getting fairly good efficacy of the entrust sprays, the spinosad sprays, that are applied during the summer targeted against apple maggot fly. Tarnished plant bug, plump curculio, and European apple sawfly have been sporadically problematic in the orchards. We have applied a, a fairly intensive spray schedule against them, and we found that uh, the addition of a neem extract spray at the pink bud stage seem to have reduced the fruit drop from the European apple sawfly that was observed in 2008 prior to the, uh, the, the study that these results are, are showing. Um, and we've also found that the damage from these three pests rarely or uncommonly downgrades the fruit to a lower valued grade at pack out. Fruit damage from feeding by Lepidopteran species that feed on the surface of the fruit such as oblique banded leaf roller, red banded leaf roller, green fruit worm, and aborted codling moth or oriental fruit moth larvae was considerable in most study years. Damage incidents separated out statistically in most years in orchards, but the separations were not consistent in that any one cultivar across all three years could be said to be more or less susceptible to this damage. In 2009, only in Orchard 1 did we have statistically significant separations where McCowan had a greater incidence than ginger gold of surface Lepidoptera damage. In 2010, however, ginger gold had the greatest incidence of damage in both orchards, and Zestar as well was in the same uh, damage incidence class as ginger gold in Orchard 2. In 2011, Zestar had a high incidence of surface Lepidoptera damage in, tooth in Orchard 1, but Honeycrisp had the highest incidence in Orchard 2. Damage to fruit from, from Lepidopteran species that tunnel into the flesh were graded as internal lep damage. This damage was often caused likely by codling moth based upon a 2010 study of excised larvae under a microscope where we determined that most larvae were codling moth. However, oriental fruit moth have been consistently caught in wing traps, baited wing traps, during the years of this study during normal orchard monitoring. The incidence of internal lepidopteran damage 
is often high, especially in the year 2010. There were separations, statistical separations, in most years in orchards, but they were not consistent to where we can say that one particular cultivar is more susceptible than another over the course of all three years. In 2009, for example, Ginger Gold and Zestar had the highest rank separation of internal Lepidopteran damage in Orchard 1, and Ginger Gold had the highest in Orchard 2. Honeycrisp had the lowest rank separation in both orchards. But in 2010, Honeycrisp had the highest incidence of internal Lepidopteran damage in both orchards with 54% and 59% damaged fruit in Orchards 1 and 2, respectively. Liberty was in the second rank class below both orchards, and Ginger Gold had the lowest incidence of internal Lepidopteran damage of all uh, cultivars that year. In 2010, after intensive management uh, of, of internal lep Lepidopteran pests, we did see a reduction in incidence of, of uh, feeding damage on the fruit. However, the numbers are still a little bit higher than we would like to see, and there still is more work to be done. There was only statistical separation in 2011 in Orchard 1, where Zestar fruit were significantly more damaged than the other four cultivars. Considering the increase in codling moth damage in 2010, we looked at baited, pheromone baited wing trap captures, which are collected during weekly monitoring of the orchards over the last three years of the project. We can see that in Orchard 1, we have a, a fairly baseline population in 2009. In 2010, we saw an increase in two specific peaks of the flight of these moths. And the, the latter peak occurred in mid to late August, which is generally at the end of the, of the uh, spray program in the orchards. And we likely missed that generation uh, in our control measures. And therefore, uh, we saw that, that high infestation of fruit in Orchard 1 in 2010. Orchard Orchard 1 in 2011, we saw again another increase in flight of adult moths that were captured. 2009 Orchard 2, we again see a fairly steady baseline population. Following year, another big jump in as we saw in Orchard 1. And in 2011, we saw that we maintained a high population. If we look at the total cumulative codling moth trap captures per year, per orchard, for all of the orchards on the farm, including uh, non-organic IPM orchards located elsewhere, we can see that overall codling moth captures are increasing orchard-wide. And this includes in a uh, standard non-organic uh, integrated pest manage management managed orchard. So we're seeing a, a greater uh, uh, inherent population farm-wide that will certainly have to be dealt with in the future. So in summary, Lepidopteran species, both the surface feeding species and the internal feeders, have emerged as the primary direct pest of fruit in the organic of plantings. The surface leps, including the uh, red-banded and oblique-banded leaf rollers, uh, certainly have been a, a problem, less so than the internal leps, and possibly some of the surface lepidopteran feeding we were seeing, especially in 2011, may be because uh, what would normally be internal feeders, codling moth or possibly oriental fruit moth, are receiving sublethal doses of materials as they feed on the fruit surface, which allows them to feed on the surface, cause damage, but then abort their feeding uh, and, and typically die before they tunnel. That may be some of the increase that we saw in surface damage in 2011. For internal lepidopterans, codling moth has been the primary offender, uh, as noted in, uh, in, in inspection of, of larvae in 2010. In 2011, we introduced codling moth granulosis virus to the pest management schedule. And this is a very specific tool that only affects codling moth. It is a naturally occurring virus 
that can reduce uh, codling moth populations, but it really needs to be built up uh, in the orchard system over a number of years uh, in order for it to work effectively. This was also, we, we had high uh, incidence still in the 10% range on fruit in 2011, and the cost of the applications targeting codling moth and other lepidopterans in 2011 was extremely high. In future seasons, we intend to explore the addition of mating disruption tactics to the orchard and the surrounding orchard ecosystem to improve, better improve the management of these uh, uh, lepidopteran species, which will be key to making the system more uh, successful. Thank you for viewing these presentations, and we invite you to view other presentations from this meeting and other results from the project at the Organica website as shown on your screen.